Well, welcome back. Welcome anew. I'm Joseph McClendon III, and welcome to the Further Faster podcast. I'll be your host, your guide, and maybe even your mentor along this journey, this leg of your journey in your life to do exactly what the name implies, and that is to assist you in going further faster in becoming wealthy. And around here, wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. And today is a very special day. I'm going to talk to you about your special friend your constant companion. Your constant companion has so much influence on you that it determines uh, the exact way your life is turning out and is going to turn out. Now, if you've been around me at all, you know I'm talking about your thoughts, but today I'm talking about a very specific set of thoughts that you have, and those are the stories that you tell. So grab a pad and paper because you're going to want to take some notes on this, and I'll be right back uh, with the stories of your life. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's not too far-fetched to say that we, all of us, you, are masters and talented and skilled at storytelling. Now, don't get it twisted. Here's what I mean by that. First off, when you think about, you know, when I was a kid, uh, and maybe for you as well, our parents or whoever raised us, when we were really, really little, sat us down and told us stories. And they were simple stories in the very beginning. They were like Aesop's fables or things like that, where there was always a hero and always something that happened. There was a beginning and end to that story. And that made us feel good when we were doing it. And you might not consider yourself a great storyteller, but you really are. As a matter of fact, it's nonstop. At the top of this, I said, I want to talk to you about your constant companion. And I talked about it's our thoughts, your constant companion. Obviously, the things that we think will determine how we feel and how we feel will determine what we do and what we do will determine what we get. That's kind of the fundamentals of neuro encoding. However, a very specific set of thoughts that we have, which are just, by the way, words and pictures or sounds and images and or sounds and images that are constantly going, our brain never shuts up. But more specifically, we have stories that we tell about ourselves. And I'm going to introduce you to a new type of story today uh, that is one that is not only going to help you with the stories that uh, you are currently telling to help shift those so that they are more beneficial and, and help you out more, but also one that's going to give you what I call a compelling future or that internal pull something that we look forward to, that positive expectancy of something getting ready to happen in our lives and that gives us that, I want to get up early, stay up late and do the extra stuff that it takes to get the things that I want to make happen in my life and for the lives of the people that I love. And so consider this, we have a whole bunch of stories that we tell about ourselves, about other people and about the world around us. And that makes up our psychology, meaning our psychology is, the con or psychology is just the constant thoughts that we have about ourselves, other people in the world around us. If you have, uh, uh, and, and by the way, those thoughts are, are usually situated in the part of your brain that repeats. And what that means is, is that the stories that we tell, it's not the first time that we've told that story about ourselves. I'll give you a perfect example. Some of you know this, some of you don't. When I was 17 and a half years old, three grown men tried to take my life because of the color of my skin, and they left me for dead. And it wasn't, I always say this, because it wasn't just the physical abuse that they gave me. It was the things that they said to me that stuck in my head. And so I had this story for many years that was going on inside of my head that I was worthless that I, that I deserved that, and the story that I relived over and over, because that was a real live experience that I lived over and over in my head, so much so that I remember in the very beginning, I could see it, and I had bad dreams about it that I would remember. But later on, I didn't consciously think about those things. But you know what? Just like your phone and just like your computer, there's an operating system that's going on that's running underneath all of that. That story, because it gets told so much, gets pushed to the unconscious part of our brain that repeats over and over again. And that becomes who we are. Now, that was a pretty radical story, but I'll bet you've had some incidents in your life that you 
uh, that, that, let's just say, left an indelible imprint on you. You might even want to call it trauma. <clears throat> and I always say that trauma happens once in general. Even if the same type of trauma happens again, the first one is the one that set it off. But the reliving of that trauma is done through the storytelling. And it's almost like it's happening again. See, our bodies and our minds cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's not when we imagine it, especially when we vividly imagine it. Oftentimes, as a matter of fact, you want to try this right now. Imagine yourself. You want to close your eyes if you're not driving and imagine yourself. Let's say you're in your living room. And um, you stand up and you go into the kitchen. You open the refrigerator and there on the shelf is a big, fat, juicy yellow lemon. You take that lemon out. Go to the cutting board and cut it in half. Take half of that lemon and bring it up to your mouth. Sorry, bring it up to your nose and smell the fragrance of that lemon. Put that half of the lemon down and bring the other half up. And as you smell it, open your mouth and take a bite out of that lemon. Chew it up. Don't swallow it, but just chew it up and let the juice run under your tongue. And keep on chewing and take your teeth and rake the meat out of that lemon and crunch the seeds that come along with it. Now, open your eyes and what's happening inside of your mouth? Well, if you're like most human beings, even me right now as I'm telling this story, my mouth, I'm salivating and it's probably the same with you. And when I do this live and I'm not seeing you right now, most of us, if you're seeing me right now, most of us, when I say bite into the lemon, most of us scrunch our faces up and we, you know, like a sour thing, which means there's probably no lemon in the room. I'm certainly not one here, which means that your brain believes that it's real because it imagined it and it made your body respond by salivating. It made your body respond by grimacing. What does that all mean? It means just like the stories that we tell, and the example that I used about myself or whatever stories you've told about yourself and continue to tell about yourself have the same effect. It causes you to feel like it's real, just like you felt like the lemon was real. It causes you to respond with your physical body, just like you responded by salivating or scrunching your face up. And those responses can be as many as the grains of sand on the beach. Your response might be when something happens, when you have a, a repeat of that story that you might not even know that you're telling. You might procrastinate. You might hesitate. You might have a story that you say about yourself that I'm big boned and therefore I can't lose weight or, you know what, I'm a loser. Therefore, I can't make any money. Or you might have the antithesis. You know what? I'm a healthy person. I've always been healthy and, I, and I've got good willpower and I eat healthily. You might have the belief that, you know what, money flows to me in oceans and oceans of abundance. And you remember those times that maybe you got a lot of money or you did something. You got up early, you did something. Those are the stories that are dominating in your mind. But here's the deal. Those stories, we're not conscious that they're happening all the time. They faded into black. They faded into our unconscious mind and they become our beliefs. And so you could spend months, years, decades trying to go back and erase all of those stories or remember what all those stories are, or even think about whatever stories that you have about yourself that hinder you or you can do what I'm going to tell you to do, which is the shortcut, if you will, which is the, the, the uh, what do they call it, a hack, if you will, to at the very least mitigate those stories, but at the very most replace them with something, other stories that serve you. Now, there's a couple different types of stories. There's short stories and there's long stories. Most of us live short stories. And those short stories are when something happens and we're reminded of who we are. We're reminded that it's time to get up. And I, again, I use things like losing weight or going to the gym or making money just because they're low hanging fruit, fruit, but it's synonymous with everything that we do in life or everything that we want to do. And so when it's time to go to the gym, what the story that you have in your, in the back of your mind is I'm tired. You know, and I, I don't have a lot enough energy lately, or I'm this, or I'm that, I, this, I, that, whatever. Now that is going to dominate Again, your feelings about going to the gym or eating that healthy food or doing whatever it takes, it's going to dominate that. You know why? Because it's got so many times. And I remember what I always say, repetition is the mother of all skill. And most of us have become very, very skilled at telling those stories that do not help us. You know, I left an Instagram post yesterday and I asked the question and I ask you this question too. What kind of stories have you been telling today? 
If you've been awake for more than 15 minutes, you're telling stories. Were they stories that, that empower you, edify you, make you proud? Were there stories of, and memories of things that you did, that you accomplished, that you succeeded at? Things that you, adventures that you had? Were there stories of possibility of what's getting ready to come up? Were there stories of, of your glory days? Were there stories of what you're excited about doing? Were there, or were there stories of what you're able to, capable of doing? Or were they, anti, they the antithesis, antithesis? Were they stories that denigrate you? Are they stories that, that cause you to feel bad and remember some of the things that you regretted or things that you resented or things that you were ashamed of, embarrassed of, or things that happened in your past? Well, like I said before, you can sit down and you can think about all those things and you can go. And, and it's a question I want you to ask because here's the way to get to what kind of stories that you're, you've been telling, how you're feeling right now. Are you feeling empowered? Are you feeling great? Are you feeling, you know, that, that anything is possible? I'm ready to go. I'm excited. Or are you feeling like uh, another day? Are you feeling like, you know, whatever, whatever time of day it is, whatever mood, whatever feeling, whatever you're going through in that moment, I guarantee you is directly t tied to whatever stories that preceded you, even sometimes just minutes ago, consciously or unconsciously. Now, having said that, that's one type of story. Remember, there's short stories that, that pop up and go, that's this and this and this. Or if you're like me, you know, I've had times where I get caught in a rabbit hole. I go down a rabbit hole of telling and remembering this story of what happened to me and something that happened yesterday. And, and here, how about this? Have you ever had those times where you had an argument or a conversation with somebody and it wasn't a great conversation and you came away feeling uh, hurt or you came away feeling resentful. Or you came away feeling like you, you could have gone better. But you keep telling that story over and over again in your head about here's what I would have said. And you relive that over and over again. Well, here's the deal. You can't change what happened. You can only change what you can only do something about it going forward. And how you do something about it within yourself is wait for it. Don't just stop telling that story, that's a no-brainer. Everybody says, well, okay, I got to stop that. And obviously, I'm going to show you ways to do that. But replace it with a story that serves you. Even if you had a bad experience. I'll get, again, I'll go back to the experience that I had uh, when, I got, when I got attacked. Even though this is going to sound trite, the truth of the matter is, is when I learned to not just stop telling that story, but start telling another story. And the other story in the very beginning was something like this. Yes, that happened. That's the truth that that happened. And, not but, and I not only survived, but I'm a stronger person for that. And I'm wiser for that. And I'm wiser because I know that even those, the things that they said to me are not true. I've got a lifetime of successes. I've got a lifetime of things that I've done. And I've got a lifetime in front of me of things that I'm going to do, that I can do, that I want to do, that I want to bring in my life. And I would literally sit down and tell myself those types of stories. And I would, I remember thinking that, okay, you know, that, but that really did happen. And it would kind of come back to me at times. And in those times, you got to learn the habit of snapping out of it. And so what would happen is during that, I would literally do that. Because here's the beauty that I want you to know. Without question, one of the greatest, greatest attributes or um, advantages of being a human being is the ability to change what we think, said differently in this case, to change the stories that we tell. The ability to shift our focus, shift the images that we're making in our minds, shift the pictures, the motion pictures, the sounds, everything in our minds. And it is that simple that you can do it. And so when we start, when we realize that, wait a minute, I'm in control here. And by the way, most people don't realize that till later on in life. So Spoiler alert, this is your time right now to recognize that that is your superpower, if you will, your God-given right to use that brain and direct it in the, in the, in the way that is going to serve you and serve at the risk of sounding too, too uh, uh, noble, serve all of mankind. 
because the better you, the better other people around you. You know, my saying is always that, that those of us that dare to dream while the rest of the world is having a nightmare, we're not only going to create the abundance and, and prosper in the ways that we want for our own lives and become wealthy, healthy, happy, and financially abundant. But on, a, on another note, we're also going to be shining examples for others to use as an example of what is possible. And so by you doing better, by you being better, by you, by you creating more and you, you being that example, you're inspiring other people. Because I promise you, in your life, all that you've accomplished thus far, you didn't do it in a vacuum. You didn't do it on a loan. Matter of fact, even all the way down to walking and talking and all the basic things that you did as a child, you did them because you saw somebody else doing it and you were inspired on some level that I can do that as well. And so that has not changed with you. That has not changed with all of mankind, except for the conversations that we have get in the way. I can't do this. There's something wrong with me. I've never been able to do this before when nothing could be further from the, from the truth that you can, you always have. And here's the best part. You always will. And so I'm going to share with you something, and then we're going to take a break here shortly. And when I come back, I'm going to tell you a better kind of story to tell a whole new thing for you. that is not only going to create uh, that internal drive, that internal pool pull, but it's also going to set you up for the future. But first, before we do, I want to share with you how to shift the stories that you're telling now without having to go back and think of all of the, 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 the stories that you are telling about yourself that do not assist you. Without having to go back and, and go, well, why am I this? Why am I that? You are this, you are that because of the thoughts that you've been thinking. And obviously, in this case, it's the stories that we've been telling. Instead, here's the key. And I told you to take some notes or get a pad and paper. So I want you to write this down. Here's the formula. And if you've been around me at all, you know this is the, the, the standard formula that runs through all of neuroencoding. And neuroencoding, by the way, in case you, you don't know, is the skill or the, the ability to be able to program yourself and others, should you choose to and should they choose to allow you, program yourself and others to automatically default to your best behavior. What does that mean? That means when something shows up uh, that knocks you off track, that knocks you off balance, if you will, a hardship or a challenge or something happens that, that is, uh, let's just say, unfortunate, instead of dwelling in it and wallowing in it and letting it affect you for over and over for, uh, for X amount, you know, for a longer period of time, you snap out of it and replace it with something that serves you serves you. And so here's the formula. Number one, feel bad on purpose. I'll explain to you what that means here in a second. Number two, interrupt that pattern or that thought. I'll explain to you in a second. Number three, feel good on purpose. And number four, celebrate. And I'm going to go through this very, very quickly, and we're going to take a short break, and I'll be right back. And that is this. Instead of waiting, instead of, or, or instead of going, why am I this? Why am I that? Just feel bad on purpose. Just feel bad. In other words, think of something like in my case, when I would think about those guys attacking me, I would feel bad on purpose. And then number two, I just stand up and shake myself out. Sometimes if you're watching me right now, you can just go like this. If you catch yourself feeling bad or, or you cause yourself to feel bad just for a moment. Do not dwell on it. Shake yourself out for a second because you create a vacuum in your mind. It's called a pattern interrupt. It's a scotoma in your mind. And that vacuum wants to be filled with something. And in that moment, all you got to do is smile. And I know this sounds ridiculously simple, but I want everybody to get this because that smile is mechanical. Remember what I said, that your brain cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's not. When you vividly imagine it, when you smile, your brain has to go, well, what am I smiling about? What am I happy about? And it releases dopamine and the dopamine tells your system, hey, wait a minute, do this again. This feels good. And it goes right into that vacuum. 
And it replaces that bad feeling. And the last thing is you got to celebrate. You got to praise yourself because praise is the father of skill, if you will. They say repetition is the mother of all skill. Well, praise is the father. Praise is what your body goes. Okay, where did that dopamine come from? Oh, it came from because I took myself deliberately out of feeling bad. And the story that was backing this up and I made myself feel good. And so guess what it does? It goes, I'm going to do it again. And so you start to start to you automatically start to program yourself to do that. You do that over and over again. Pretty soon you cannot feel that. Now, isn't that a quicker way than going back and looking at the old stories that you have? The answer is absolutely yes. And so the object or the outcome in this whole process is to is to figure out number one. What is a better story for you to tell? What is a better example of that you could describe of yourself from your identity to whatever that you could describe of, of, of yourself to put in that place? Now, obviously, a smile is going to get you. It's going to get that dopamine release. You're going to feel differently in that moment. And what happens after that is critical to the programming part because it's going to be repetition. So we're going to take a short break here, and I'm going to be right back, and I'm going to tell you a different type of story that is going to, like I said, enhance how you feel in the moment and in an ongoing moment, uh, ongoing way, but also give you that internal pull to give you that that carrot on the stick, if you will, to give you that compelling future. And so I'll be right back in just a few moments, and I'm going to tell you about a saga, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be right back. Hey, what's good? It's me, Joseph McClendon III. And let me get real with you just for a second. Now, you've probably heard me talk about this before, something that I call the thieves of our dreams. Procrastination, hesitation, fear of failure, fear of success, self-doubt, self-loathing, imposter syndrome, and fear of rejection. Well, let me ask you a question. What if you could not only retrain your brain and your nervous system to automatically default to your absolute best thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, but you could also do the same for others that are going through difficult times and challenges in their own lives and things that are stopping them from creating the life of their desires. Well, this is what I call neuroencoding. And at the risk of sounding arrogant, these are the same tools, methods, and strategies in neuroscience that I've used to operate in the upper 5% of all my own businesses, especially as a coach, a speaker, and a presenter for the last 30 plus years. The Neuroencoding Institute provides you with the knowledge, the tools, and unmatched support to become a certified neuroencoding specialist and guide you to the life of wealthiness. And remember, wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. Go to neuroencoding.com com to speak to an enrollment specialist today, and I look forward to serving you at the highest level. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore a complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash angel phoenix productions. Welcome back. So what is this new type of story and, and why should I be telling this? Well, there's two types of stories. There's stories and there's sagas. A story is usually short. It has a beginning and an end. It is this happened and this is the conclusion of that. A story is if you watch a movie, that's a story. It has a beginning and an end. It has you know, a voyage in between there where the hero or the heroine goes through this and blah, blah, blah. It goes up and down and up and down and bam, everything's okay or everything's not okay if it's a horror movie. But either way, it's a short. And that's the stories that we tell ourselves. And you could have had something that happened to you that lasted two weeks and you've condensed it into a very short story, good or bad. And all you have to do is to be triggered and it goes right back to, oh, that's what happened. That's why I feel about that. That's this. But here's the deal. Like I said before, one of the greatest part things about uh, advantages of being a human being is the ability to make stuff up because we do it all the time. The ability to change how we think and how we change how we think is we change the words and the images that we're having on a continual basis. You do it with excitement. You do it with enthusiasm. Guess what? You'll believe it even quicker. You'll go further faster in doing it. And so 
like I said, you can you can you know, sit down and go go back and think of all the bad things and you try to figure that stuff out. But that's just a, not a waste of time. And here's what I want to say. I, 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 I do want to acknowledge that there is sometimes even some cathartic healing in remembering all of those things. And that's great. It's just like people always say, well, Joseph, how long should I mourn when I lose somebody? I don't know. Everybody's different. And I am going to say this, that if you mourn without somewhere else to go, then you will stay in mourning. Meaning if you don't have a release valve, if you don't have something to step off into that's going to go, okay, now it's time for me to move on with my life, then you'll stay mourning longer. And that decision has to come to, it comes down to, it's an individual thing. And I will say this, using mourning as an example, it is a story that you're telling about that stuff. Now I've lost this person. I'll never be able to see this person again. And, and all the things that I you know, am unable to do, there is an antithesis. And the antithesis isn't, okay, now this person's gone and, and now I get to move on. The antithesis in this case is remembering what was great about them called polishing up your memories. And again, I'm using this, but it's synonymous with anything else that we do. Polish up your memories of every great thing that has happened around that person. My mother passed away in 1999, November 19th, 1999. And I was given this gift that I want to give to you now. And I'm going again, I'm using this in, 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 uh, in, in conjunction with mourning. However, it is synonymous with anything else that you do, anything else that you do. And, um, you know, I knew my mother was passing and I was in Fiji and I couldn't get home. She'd gone into a coma and I couldn't get home. And so my friend, Tony Robbins, suggested to me, he goes, get out a journal and polish up your memories. Write down any and everything you can ever remember about her, anything. And I got my journal. I started writing. And do you know, to this date, I, to this day, I still remember things. I still remember things because I had a lifetime. I had 46 years with this, 47 years with this amazing woman and a lifetime of memories, phone calls, you know, her and my, my five, my uh, recital is five years old and things like that. And so it can be the same for you, for you to sit down and polish up your memories about you, because that's the story that you need to tell. And that type of story is what I call a saga. A saga is an ongoing story. You know, matter of fact, I, I screenshot it. Let me let me read you what I uh, I asked Siri to tell me what is a saga, and I think I uh, hang on here. It is yeah, a saga is a long story or account of a sequence of events ongoing. And so, when you think about it, how often do you tell your saga, See, because the story of your life is not complete yet. It's not complete yet, but, but I will say this, the more that you go back and you take a look at all the successes, all the great things, all the things that you've done in your life, all the ups and all the great things in your life, and maybe even some of those downs, but you did succeed and you, and you pulled through it. You're polishing those memories and you're creating that saga and it's ongoing. Because like I said, the story of your life has not been, the saga of your life has not been written. It's in process. And that process of you, uh, of you reviewing and then going, okay, well, here's what's next for me. And you know why I know that's going to happen? Because I've done this, 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 and this. But here's the great part about it. When you sit down, and I encourage you to do this, you don't have to do it poetically. You can just sit down and make a list of here's all the things that I have done in the past. That's a story, ladies and gentlemen. That is a saga. Here's all of the things, a long story, a lifetime. I don't care if you're just 18 or 16 years old. You've got 16 years of great achievements, walking, talking. By the way, they don't have to be all the great things, all the, the magnificent things. It can be anything. The brain does not stop searching once it starts searching. As ye seek, so shall ye find. As ye seek, so shall ye continue to seek. So what happens, and this is a great exercise, take five minutes every day. This is your assignment. Take five minutes every day and just list any and everything that you've accomplished. Again, it doesn't have to be in any chronological order. It doesn't have to be poetic. You can just say, graduated from high school. You can say, tied my shoes this morning. When you run out all the great stuff, you can go, I brushed my teeth. I took the garbage out. I had a good night's sleep. Whatever. Your brain will start to search, and let's go all the way back to licking that lemon. 
Your brain cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's not. So when you imagine it, which means you're thinking about it, guess what happens? Dopamine release. The brain goes, what just happened before this? Let's do it again. The brain goes, yeah, I am a badass. Yeah, I can do this. And remember this, success is built on success. What that means is you push off of the rung on the ladder that was before to get to the next. When you climb steps, even though you might leap and jump a couple of them, you still got to leave one point to get to the other. When you stood up and walked for the first time, you stood up and you fell over and you went, you didn't go, okay, I fell over and I'll never walk again. You went, hey, that sort of worked. Let me try it again. Success is built on success. So when you start looking for that, here's what happens internally. Your brain starts to go, yes, this is true. I am. Remember, psychology is I am. People are. The world is. And you start to tell a saga. And the saga is lifelong. And you've got one and it's unique to you. And that is your constant companion. And here's the great part about, it, about a saga. It's never ending. In other words, your brain goes, it's automatically, it just starts to happen. This is the way you program yourself. Your brain always gets, gets to go, I've done all of these things. So what's next is I can do this as well. I'm capable of this and I'm capable of that. And it'll start to feel that. And then when you attach that to your dreams, goals, and desires that you want to make happen, you have a renewed sense of certainty, confidence, pride, self-esteem. All of those things start to be created internally just by doing a simple 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 exercise now i've been doing this for years and years and like i said whether it's you know things about my mom or things about anything else i've been doing it for years and years and i've recommended this to a lot of my clients and it's it is life changing when you do it so let's recap we all have been telling stories you don't have to go back and look at and go, okay, these are the bad stories that have made me feel bad. Instead, let's cut to the chase. What are some better stories that you want to tell yourself? What are some better stories that uh, of your successes in the past? You can tell what stories you've been telling by the emotions and the feeling that you're feeling, the kind of day that you're having, the kind of life that you're having. You got a great life. You feel great. I promise you that you've been telling yourself great stories. You got a crappy life, a lot of stuff going bad, a lot of stuff that happened today, all this and that. You've been telling yourself stories, regardless of whether they're true, whether they're true or not. And so the formula is instead of waiting for yourself to feel bad, do it on purpose. Make yourself feel bad. Think about just feeling, you know, here's how bad I feel, or here's something that happened, so on and so forth, and then snap yourself out of it. Stand up, feel bad. Interrupt your pattern, stand up, shake yourself out, go, go like this, whatever, because you create that vacuum. And then just smile and go, hey, it's going to be okay. And then pat yourself on the back and then move on. Lastly, sit down and polish up your stories, your memories about you. Create a saga about you. Do this. I want you to do this for the next 10 days. I'm not asking much, five minutes a day. And I promise you, within just a few days, you're going to start to notice something different about you, how you're feeling, how you're thinking your level of optimism. And remember, around here, optimism doesn't mean that every I'm, I'm saying every cloud is a silver lining and everything's are great. I'm saying you have more options and you have those options that are on that page that you wrote there. It's such an unbelievably simple exercise. And as you do it, life will start to unfold differently for you. Lastly, I'm going to say this. First off, thank you so much for the gift of your time, the gift of your trust, the gift of your energy and your attention. And then lastly, I'm going to say that life is always exactly what you dare to make it. And fortune, fortune, whatever you consider fortune to be, fortune favors the bold. And so the trick to life is to always boldly step up and dare to make your life magnificent. I look forward to serving you and I'll see you at the top. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.